Hey guys, I'm Jordy, and this is your guide to the teacher with a drinking problem, Professor Putricide. Good news, everyone. I think I've perfected a play that will destroy all life on Azeroth. Now, Putricide is a three-phase fight with two intermissions. The first two phases building on each other, featuring different colored oozes, and then a final manic third phase where you're racing a stacking debuff that will ripe the raid and a room filling with ooze that you need to avoid. One unique extra mechanic this boss has, the ability for one player in your raid to drink a potion on Putricide's table and become overwhelmed with the chemicals that they transform into a mutated abomination. This player will have an important role that we'll go over later. Okay, so Putricide is a two tank, five healer fight. Depending on how your DPS is, you could three tank it. It would make your phase three a bit easier, but it's very doable with two tanks and some smart tactics that we'll discuss. Your best A-bomb driver will be your off tank who will only need to tank in phase three when the abomination disappears anyways. All right, let's discuss Putricide's phase one abilities. First, every 35 seconds or so, Putricide will throw two puddles of slime on the ground that over time will grow and grow to a huge size, cutting off sections of the room. These are generally avoidable, and the Abomination has an ability that we'll get to later that will drink the slime, so you'll most often not have to worry about these. Next, Unbound Plague. Every minute Putricide is active, he'll cast Unbound Plague on a random player, lasting for one minute. This debuff will start ticking for about 250 and then grow every second that it's on you, becoming very dangerous about 10 seconds in and critically dangerous at about 15. Now, if someone moves close to you, the plague will jump to them, resetting the damage it does, but retaining the total time left on the debuff. The person who had the debuff now gets a new one called Plague Sickness, increasing the damage that they take from Unbound Plague by 250% for one minute. The goal here is to trade this debuff off to a friend every 10 seconds or so, keeping everyone alive who has it while simultaneously doing every other important thing this fight has. No big deal, you've got this. We'll discuss this further in the walkthrough. Okay, now you've seen these slimes flying around, but what are they exactly? There are two different types of oozes, each with a specific set of abilities that will need to be handled quickly to keep the battlefield clean and cut down on any complications. So 25 seconds into the pull and every 40 seconds thereafter, an ooze will spawn, starting with a green one, then a red one, and then alternating each time. All right, let's start with the green one, the volatile ooze. This spawns on the right side of the room near the big green tank, once it spawns, it will select a target during a three second cast and then a green beam will connect the player and the ooze, rooting the player in place with volatile ooze adhesive, dealing a bit of damage and as the tooltip says, once it reaches the rooted player, it will throw a huge AOE around it, knocking anyone back and splitting the damage between those hit. Once that damage lands, the ooze will now cast a retargeting spell and after three seconds, apply another adhesive to someone else, rooting them and the process continues. The goal here as a player is to blow this ooze up as fast as possible, limiting the amount of times that the explosion damage goes out and when it makes sense, split the damage between as many players as you can. Additionally, you're looking to try to have everyone knocked in the same direction so that it's easier for people to retarget the ooze once they go flying and keeping DPS high. One thing to note, mages can blink to move some here, hunters can feign the ooze off to get it to retarget, and warlocks can summoning circle to increase the time that your raid has to DPS it before it reaches its target. That's the green one, let's talk about the orange one, or the red one, whatever. The orange ooze is called Gas Cloud, and it works pretty differently from the Volatile Ooze. After it spawns, it will cast a targeting spell for three seconds and then apply Gaseous Bloat on someone and begin chasing them. This does damage over time, and if the Gas Cloud reaches them, will do an often raid-wiping amount of damage. If you're targeted by this, you need to run away from it and ideally boot away once it gets close to you to prevent it from ever touching you. It's easier to handle than the green one, but it is still super dangerous. Now this ooze and the green one can both be slowed by the A-bomb driver, and it's critical that that happens to give those debuffed by these extra time to kill them. 
All right, it's about that time that we need to go into how the mutated abomination works. Upon drinking the potion on Putricide's table, you'll have a few seconds before turning into this monstrous construct. Now this is a disease, so it's important not to be accidentally cleansed of it. Healers just blacklist the debuff from your frame so you don't see it. Okay, so the abomination has a bunch of HP and an energy bar. Each of its moves cost energy, and to get energy, you need to drink from the slime puddles on the ground. The puddles grow over time, so you can actually choose not to drink them right away if you find yourself low on energy and want to top up. We choose to leave one puddle up the entire fight by dropping it on the wall over here at the start, and then if the A-bomb needs energy, they can always go over to it and use it. Okay, so the Abomination has three abilities. On the one key, as I mentioned, eat ooze. When you're standing over an ooze puddle, you'll bend over and start shoving all that ooze into your mouth, removing ooze from the floor and gaining energy for each tick that you do. Second, regurgitated ooze. This costs 45 energy and can be used from 50 yards. You target the volatile ooze or the gas clouds that Putricide spawns and use this, slowing them down by 50% and giving your raid much more time to DPS them before they reach their intended targets. Finally, Mutated Slash. This does 100% weapon damage, but also applies a Sunder-like debuff onto Putricide. This is nice, but it doesn't stack with Sunder Armor or Expose, so getting the debuff up is not super important. It is nice damage though. So your goals here are threefold. Most critically, keep the room clear of slime puddles. They must be prioritized because you don't want to fall behind and not be able to clean up the puddles that he spawns before the next set goes out. If you do get behind, work on the small ones first to eliminate them, then go work on the big ones. Next, slowing the oozes that spawn. The A-bomb needs to help the raid out and get these things debuffed so that they have more time to blast them. Finally, do damn to Putricide. If you've done both of these first two things adequately, you can spend some time on Putricide. The A-bomb does a lot of damage. I've seen some logs where it doubles the number one DPS in the raid, so do what you can in DPSing the boss and contribute as you will. But again, this thing's DPS is not required for you to kill the boss, just focus on those first two things first. There are a lot of ways to min-max it. I don't want to get too in the weeds here with this. If you want to discuss further, come hang out in my Discord. We'll get a thread going. All right, let's see how phase one is handled in practice. On pull, you'll grab the boss. Now we like to pull him against this wall with the raid here, baiting those first slime puddles here so that it minimizes the impact it has on the room at large while letting the puddle grow big so the A-bomb has an infinite supply of energy when they want it. After that, we move out some, spreading out and waiting for the first green ooze to spawn. Now the first unbound plague will go out. If it's on someone in melee, try to run it out to the ranged, but it might be difficult. It could machine gun around everybody and apply the plague sickness. Now don't panic, just do your best to get it out to the ranged, ideally a healer, and then run back in. Once it is in ranged, the other healers and casters should recognize where it's at and communicate with each other who is going to take the next 10 seconds or so of the debuff. Another way to handle this is to soul stone the person that gets the debuff, let them die, and the debuff should disappear. We like to avoid people dying when possible, but if you're really struggling with this mechanic, that is one way to go. Okay, so 25 seconds in, the first green ooze should spawn. It does take a while to activate, so your whole raid should swap to it and blow it up. The A-bomb driver might struggle having enough energy to slow this first one, do your best, but the whole raid can focus on it quite easily, so get it down fast. We try to get people to do their best to be on the table side of the ooze, so that when it does explode, everyone is knocked in the same direction, making it easier for DPS to resume and the entire raid isn't spread out all over the place. For the explosion, pets split the damage as well as snakes from a snake trap, so give it a go. Help mitigate some of that damage. All right, the ooze is dead, we return DPS to Putricide. If your DPS is good, you can phase him at 80% before the orange ooze spawns, but if it's not, which is fine, you need to stop DPS at around 82% so that that gas cloud can spawn and give you time to deal with it. It's absolutely critical that you don't hit 80% with an ooze spawning. 
You need a clear battlefield or you will struggle with this transition. Okay, you've handled the orange ooze or not, and you hit 80%. Putricide will run to his table and start tinkering with his potions. But while he's doing that, you'll be surprised to learn he spawns both colored oozes simultaneously. Complicating this is a debuff that is applied to everybody in the raid. Ooze variable or gas variable. Half the raid gets one, the other half the other. This reduces the damage you do to the color opposite of the debuff you have to near zero. So the raid must split DPS between the two oozes and get them down ASAP as both will be targeting players and rushing towards them, trying to blow them up. This can get kind of frantic, so do your best to get blasting on whatever color you were assigned to and get them down because you don't have much time before you're overwhelmed. You have 40 seconds in this transition before Putricide reactivates, so you need to get these dead ASAP. One tip here is the debuff that reduces your damage doesn't actually apply until a tiny bit into the spawning of the oozes. So we have all of our DPS apply dots and stuff on the green ooze for a split second as it spawns doing full damage before the debuffs hit the raid. Once it does, you go to whatever assignment you got, but getting that green one fully dotted on the rip helps a ton. If your ooze dies, you can start working on putricide, but those oozes need to die first. Okay, that's the transition. The oozes are dead, putricide reactivates, and we're into phase two. Phase two is very similar to phase one outside of a couple small additions that you need to be aware of. First, he'll start throwing three malleable goos at a few ranged targets every 20 seconds. These bounce toward the targeted players and will explode when they land where the player was when it was cast. If you see these things coming at you, you need to move away or you'll be hit for big damage. And if you're the one targeted, you will be debuffed with a 200% attack and cast speed slow for 15 seconds. That will really screw you up. Additionally, he'll place a couple orange bottles on the ground called choking gas bombs about every 35 seconds in melee range of him. If you get too close to these, they will explode, dealing a bunch of damage and also applying a debuff to reduce your chance to hit by 75% for 10 seconds. It's very important to avoid these by having your tank drag the boss away from them when they spawn and your ranged and melee need to be cognizant of their positioning. After 20 seconds, they should explode and disappear. Otherwise, everything about this phase is the same as phase one. You're dealing with slime puddles, unbound plague, and of course, alternating green and orange oozes. This phase can get a bit hectic with all the stuff flying around, so try to keep comms clear for your unbound plague people to work on trading that plague off, your tank to call for melee to move with them when the choking gas bomb spawns, malleable goo flying through the air, and of course, work really hard to eliminate those green and orange oozes as soon as they spawn because they are the most threatening things here. Now, if you've managed to DPS them down to 35%, you'll enter the final transition. Like the first one, you must be sure you aren't going to get another ooze spawn on top of the two that will spawn in the transition. You only have time to deal with the two extra that are gonna spawn Dealing with three simultaneously will almost assuredly lead to a wipe. Okay, 35% hits, Putricide gets fed up and runs to his table for a final time. Two more oozes will spawn, everyone gets their debuff, and we blast them as fast as we can. From here, your DPS is really, really important. As soon as you hit the second transition, everything is now timed very tightly because of something he does in phase three. So you want to hit these things hard and fast and then quickly turn your attention back to putricide. We save cooldowns for this. Now it's okay to have a bit of orange ooze up moving into phase three, but you do need to finish it off before full DPS can begin in on him. Okay, phase three. Putricide gets all big and scary and your A-bomb driver drops out of form and returns to their normal self. You're done with oozes now, but you've still got choking gas bombs, malleable goo, unbound plague, and importantly, slime puddles. The puddles now can't be removed from the ground because your A-bomb driver has been forced out of form, so watch your positioning and try not to drop them in the middle of the room. It will grow big over time and really cut you off. This part isn't super important because you're much more likely to die from what I'm about to tell you. Mutated Plague. 
This is a stacking debuff that's applied to Future Side's current target every 10 seconds, doing some shadow damage to the entire raid every 3 seconds and increasing its damage done per stack. Now the first stack deals 750 shadow damage every 3 seconds, the second 2250, the third 6750, and the fourth a probable raid wiping amount at 20,250. Additionally, if anyone with this debuff dies or it's somehow removed, you heal the boss a huge amount, also likely leading to a wipe. So what this means is your goal is to tank swap and get this debuff on multiple people, not letting anyone get more than three stacks, and racing to kill him in as fast as possible or you'll run out of tanky eligible targets and will likely wipe. Okay, so how do we do this? As we transition to phase three, we plop Bloodlust. The raid is finishing up oozes and we have a Fury Warrior taunt with Shield Wall up and tank the boss. One thing you can do to min-max this is have the warrior stand kind of far from the table. The debuff can only be applied on the next melee hit, so this gives the raid a few extra seconds to DPS before the first one is applied. Towards the end of that shield wall, the warrior will AoE taunt and then get bopped. This ensures Putricide stays on them, applying that second stack 10 seconds after the first and keeping that warrior alive. From here, your main tank will taunt and keep it on them for a bit. You move around the room, avoiding puddles, malleable goo, bombs, and swapping the unbound plague. Your main tank will tank for two debuff applications, and then your off tank will go, eating two more debuffs and tanking. Somewhere in here, you could have a feral druid bark skin and taunt, or a DK could taunt with IBF and eat one. Anything you have to do to keep those stacks low and spread them out. Do your absolute best not to let it get to three stacks, but that probably won't wipe you. Anything over three is untenable and it's a GG. Okay, so if you've taunt swamped well enough, avoided the stuff on the ground or flying at you, spread the plague effectively and done it all fast enough to keep the rate up through all the ticking damage, Putricide should go down. Congratulations, that's probably the second hardest fight in ICC. Okay, let's talk about some tank tips. Your priorities should be avoiding choking gas bombs, but additionally, you should try to tank him near a puddle so that the A-bomb can drink it while he DPSs the boss. This helps them a bunch so that they don't have to run back and forth. And in phase three, things get super crazy. So try to keep comms clear and concise. Who is taunting, what cooldowns they're using, etc. And remember, after three taunts in a row, you'll DR, and it will only reset after 20 seconds, so don't just spam taunt. Plan it out and be sure you're taunting at the correct time. You've got to be sure you aren't going to die in phase three as well, because if you do, you heal the boss. So use whatever cooldowns you've got here and stay alive. It is paramount. And for some healer tips, this fight is really less about healing and more about cooldown management. There are windows where the raid will take a lot of damage and you want to be prepared, but it's not too tough healing wise. Use those desacks on the volatile ooze explosions when the raid isn't looking too healthy. It will cut a lot of the damage and help you keep someone alive that may have dipped a bit for whatever reason. And be vocal about the unbound plague. You don't want to just let it tick on you and die. Hey, Jordy here, need someone to take the unbound plague from me in 10 seconds. And if you hear someone say that, look around and see if you can get there in time. If you've got one stack of Plague Sickness, you can still take it for a bit, but if you have two or more, definitely don't. You gotta let it fall off first. Additionally, in Phase 3, you wanna roll d AM Shadows, and pop all of those throughput cooldowns right at the end. Sub 10% can get really insane, but it's possible to lose a fair amount of people and still get that kill, so long as no one with the mutated Plague debuff dies. So make sure those people, specifically, stay alive. If they die, the boss heals and you will definitely not be able to recover, so prioritize them if you have to. For the DPS, if you get the plague in melee, do your best to run it out to ranged. Swapping it like crazy isn't great, so run it out and get it handled. For the volatile oozes, make sure you stack in a way that you get tossed toward the table with the ranged. It helps your healers and casters if they get targeted for the next route so that they don't have to run super far to DPS. And remember, when the transition debuff is being applied, you get a split second to do full damage to the green ooze, so get some dots up fast. That green one is super dangerous and you should kill it ASAP. 
Okay, well, that's it for Putricide. If you've got what it takes to take him down, then you should be good to start some serious prog on Heroic Lich King. Stay tuned for that guide in the coming weeks. Oh boy, it's gonna be a real doozy. And I've got you covered on a bunch of stuff in this place that you're gonna need. There's an assignment sheet out now, as well as a loot prio guide I did with Pummel. I've been posting and will continue to post a bunch of small things that will make your first weeks in ICC a lot smoother on my Patreon. Any support is super appreciated, like these fine folks have done. Thanks, guys. It means a lot. Okay, well, that's it for me. See you in the next one and the final boss guide coming soon.